Hey guys, my name is Wesley and I'm going to show you all some cool custom actions that I built for recording DI guitar through software amp sims. First off, let me show you exactly what it does. Then I'll show you how you can build it yourself and how it can improve your workflow. So first off, I've got this button here that loads up my guitar. It's all one click for me. There's a couple other things on here, but we'll get to those in a second. Let me show you why this is such a cool feature. So what I've got right here, you can see this doesn't look like a normal waveform. This is actually four channels of audio. The way this works, and why I've done it this way, is so I can drag this waveform around wherever I need it to and still retain the DI as well as the printed audio. Now of course if you have too many of these around it'll make your uh, project look kind of junky in my opinion. So I've got a button here that just shows you the rendered audio. It's pretty neat. But you can always switch to the DI if you need to. Say you want to reamp that somehow. Or say you had some stereo effects through Helix Native, some sort of ping pong left and right channel, whatever, you know. You have access to that as well. But also, let's go ahead and get rid of this channel right here. The coolest feature, we're going to add a reamp template. So now, if we want to use something like this Cali rectifier, you can take this audio that you have here, and you can move it down to this reamp channel, change it to that DI. Reamp it. So now you have that printed audio here from this new channel, but you still have access to the DI that you did before. So let me show you how all this works. It's pretty cool. Now, on your input channel, Got a couple effects before Helix Native that actually does all the magic for us. In fact, we don't need this tuner. That's just for me. We'll get rid of it. But here, we have an effect called Channel Router with Polarity. And what this does is it splits that input one and two, which in this case, we're only using channel one for my input. And it splits it and sends it to channel three before it hits the Helix Native. That way channel one and two are processed by the Helix native, but three and four are whatever raw input comes from your interface. So that's how it splits it into those four channels that we saw. Now let me show you how to build this from scratch. So we'll get rid of this track right here. And we'll start by adding a new track, arming it, record monitoring, we're going to add Helix Native or whatever software amp sim that you have. I've got a couple other ones, but we'll go with this one for now. And we also need that channel router. So we'll take that and we'll put that before the Helix Native. And like before, channels one and two were sent to three and four. But what we need to do here is add channel three and four because right now, there's no three and four to output to. We only have channels one and two. So we'll just add that. And in fact, we don't even need channel four. Channel four is just gonna be a duplicate of channel three because channel one is sent to channel three and four. I know it's a little confusing, but we'll just get rid of four. And I'll show you what I mean. And one other thing we need to do, aside from setting our to whatever we want it to be. 
is we need to force multi-channel input here. So we'll right click on the arm button, go to input force format, so we can force it to be multi-channel, which means that it will record four channels because that's what we set up in that channel router with Polaire. There you go. That's exactly how you set that up. So what we're going to do, I'm going to name this input, get rid of that audio, and save this as a template. I'm going to save it as tone, just because I'm simple like that. So now, to make the reamp template, just make another track, reamp, and we're going to drag the effects that we have on the input of the previous channel to the channel effects on reamp. And the reason we put it on the channel effects on reamp is so when we record a DI, it can actually affect the DI. Because if this was on the input effects, you wouldn't hear anything unless the audio was coming through the input of your interface. So now we have this DI right here. Let's change that to something a little bit crunchier. So now that works just like a traditional way of recording. We're going to go ahead and delete this audio. Let's give this a custom color because I like to have all my things color coded. And we'll save this as a new template called Reamp. I'm going to go ahead and save over that. So now, we'll show you how to add those in in one click. Now, if you don't have SWS extensions, I highly recommend getting it. Go to sws-extension.org, download it, install it, it's amazing, and it's required to make this work. So now let me show you how to customize your toolbar to add those simple one-click buttons. So what we want to do is go to Customize Toolbar, and you can see with these first three icons I have here, there's a guitar, a bass, and an amp. Now I've got this custom graphic here that I built. I'll put that as a link in the description, so you can also add it to your project if you want to add the reamp button. But you can see here, these buttons are nothing more than a simple SWS extension. First one, import tracks from track template slot one, bass slot two, reamp slot three. So let me show you how to put those in. We'll go ahead and I'm gonna remove this one, this one, and this one. So let's add it. Import. Import tracks from track template slot one. We're gonna add another one, slot two, and slot three. Of course, gotta reorganize these. So I'm gonna change the icon for the first one. This will be my guitar input. Let's use this headstock icon. Second one, just use this body. This one's for the bass. For this third one, I have that amp icon. And that's pretty much it right there. You save it, close it, and now when you run this for the first time, it asks you to load up that track. So I'm going to go ahead and load my tone. And there you go. Let's delete this. We'll load up my bass. Now, of course, I did this one separately, but it does the same thing. And then my reamp template. Like this, and open that same reamp template. Now the other things, I'm actually going to need some audio for to show you how to build those. So we're going to go ahead and add that tone back. I've got my guitar here. 
Just something simple. And now, these buttons here are what I use for that to separate them. Normal, stereo, mono, dry. And then of course the glue and reamp will come to those. So what those are, first ones are simple. For DI normal, to show all four channels, change actions, take a look at what this is. And it's item properties, set take channel mode to normal. As simple as it can be. So click stereo, see what that does. Stereo. Set take channel mode to stereo channels one and two. It's as simple as it sounds. For mono, which is what I mainly use for recording guitar left or right or even leads, anything that only requires a mono signal. Set take channel mode to mono left. You could either set it to right or left, it doesn't matter, they're both the same signal unless you're using some sort of stereo effects, which in that case you would use the DI effects stereo. And the last one, dry, which pulls up our dry DI signal. It's just set take channel mode to mono channel three, which is where this channel router with polarity sends it. Sends it from one to three. Now glue is a little bit different because if we had two takes right here and we wanted to glue them like normal, we've now lost all that additional information we had. Now we just have whatever was active at the time. So I've built a custom action that prevents that. So now we're back to normal as you can see. We'll go ahead and set that back to DI just so we can show how this glue works. Change action, custom DI glue. And what this does is it automatically sets everything back to normal for us. So it sets it back to normal to where you can see these four channels. It glues them together and then set take channel mode to mono left, which this right here is really just for simplicity for me it allows it to go back to that pre-rendered audio and declutters everything so let me show you how that works we'll just run this glue right here and there you go and it sets it to the pre-rendered audio but now there's one other button di reamp let's go ahead and add this reamp here of course, we'll set this to a tone that's not the same one, like this Cali Rectifier. Just anything different. And what this does, this button allows you a one-click reamp. So now if you were to listen to this on a different track, but you still have access to the same information we had before. And the way this works, go down to this DI reamp, change this action, and of course it's another custom action. What it does is it first sets the take channel mode to mo uh, mono three, which is the DI that we had. It glues the items together. So if you had taken multiple parts and done some uh, slip editing, you know, to get your guitar takes perfect. It'll glue it all together for you. It applies the take effects, which is whatever you have on here, as a multi-channel output. You need to have it multi-channel so it retains the same channel structure. It crops to a new active take, which removes the pre-rendered audio, in this case, just the DI. And then it sets the take channel mode back to mono left, which is the pre-rendered audio. So it's pretty cool. Of course, let me know in the comments if this helped out at all, or if you plan on using this in your projects. And uh, see you next time.